All right, in this video, we're going to get back into B unit and Blazor and look at some different functionality within B unit that allows us to simulate interacting with our interface. In the previous videos that I have in this series, I was walking through some really simple functionality with B unit and the latest changes we looked at were extracting things into something like a view model. The view model approach allowed us to inject that and then be able to simulate what we wanted on the view model in order to be able to set up the user interface to reflect that. But in this video, we're going to walk through an example of being able to interact with the user interface and therefore not have to rely on something like a view model because BUnit is able to do all of that interaction for us. And just a quick reminder before I jump over to the code is that my refactoring for C-sharp devs course is live now. I'll have a link to that in the pinned comments below. All right, let's check out some Blazor code. So on my screen, I have the code from the previous video that we looked at where we were using a view model to accomplish being able to test more effectively. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I'll put a link to that above right now and you can check that out and then come right back here. What we could do with the view model was inject it into the component. And then that way within the different parts of the component, we could go leverage the properties of that view model. This meant that when we were creating the component, what we could do is create the view model in the current state that we want to have it. And therefore, when we render the component, we have it in a state that reflects what we want to test. Now I'm going to jump back over to another version of this page. And what we'll be able to see here is that this very closely reflects our initial state. I've gone ahead and just updated the title and the counter. But if we scroll down a little bit lower, the current count, I've left this private. And that was one of the challenges we had in the first place when it came to being able to test this component. When we're dealing with things that are private and this method is also private, it means that we're not able to call either this method or set this field because we don't have access to them from the test class. So the view model approach effectively allowed us to pull this constraint out. We could set up the view model in the state we want and therefore test what we're looking for. But if we don't want to do that and we'd like to leave this code just as it is, not explore using view models, how can we make sure that we can test the different functionality that we have on this page? Then if we look at this page, it's pretty simple, right? We're just able to click a button and this on click event is going to call this method down here and we will increment this count. And essentially the only other thing that we have to look at is that this status is updated to reflect this current count. And as I mentioned, BUnit does allow us to simulate clicks. So if we combine the click simulation and we're able to click this button here, therefore triggering this method, that will mean that we will get a count increased and therefore we should be able to get that state off of this component and see the current count. Sounds nice and simple and it is. So let's go check out the test code. All right, so on my screen, I just have a copy and paste version of the test and then the last test is updated a little bit. So the first test that we had was just looking at getting that header. And you can see that we're just using B unit to get that render component created from there, looking for the header and pulling off the counter, which is now updated to three. So that's great. This is a really simple one. Nothing new there. This test is also not unique. I just wanted to prove that with the changes we have, we're still able to test this initial state. Personally, I think this is a great type of test to have if you're just looking for the default state when no one's touching stuff on the component. If you had a more complicated component, you'd want to be able to check the other things and just ensure that if you haven't modified anything, then you have the state that you expect. In this case, the default should mean that we don't have any count. So having zero here isn't that exciting, but this is what we expect to get. And now the more interesting part, we're going to be able to simulate the clicks. And then what I have set up here as well is using a theory in X unit. And this X unit theory is going to provide one, three, or five for the different number of clicks that we want to try out. Sometimes for tests like this, I like to be able to have a little bit of variation to illustrate that if we have a single click, that there isn't a different behavior when we start looking at multiple clicks. Now, of course, this counter example is extremely trivial, so it may not warrant having different scenarios like this. A single click might be enough, but I wanted to talk about this because I think it's important that when you're testing user interfaces or other systems for that matter, that if you think you might have different behavior around the one versus many for a different variable, then it's worth giving that a shot in testing. If we look at the body of this test, we're starting off with the exact same thing in the beginning. We're getting that render component. But the next steps are a little bit different, but they're extremely simple, which is great. All that we're going to be doing is asking that render component for the button that it has. So we can just use the find method on that rendered component. And from there, we store that in the button element variable. 
And because I'm simulating a different number of clicks, I just have a for loop. And if we think about what this code will do, essentially because I only have a one, three, or five that can get passed in here for a number of clicks, in the first test, it's just going to do a single click because we're just going to have one here as the condition, and that will only call this line once. If we do three, it will do three iterations of the loop, and five, of course, will do five. And now the rest of the test is very similar in terms of looking at that markup that we have. The only difference is that I'm providing a parameter into this string through string interpolation to see that we have the right number of clicks. And to pause for a moment, what's interesting about this, right, is that we don't have a view model that we're setting up. We're assuming that default state by this behavior that we tested up here, right, that we're starting at zero, so that should make sense. And therefore, if we create a new counter and start clicking on the button, which BUnit allows us to do with this right here, then we should be able to go from zero plus one, which would give us one, zero plus three is three, and as you might guess, zero plus five is going to be five in terms of the count that we'd have. So we don't have to mock anything out. We don't have to create a new you know, state that we want to pass into this counter. We can simply create the new counter, and then from there, interact with the button. If I go ahead and run these tests, we should go from a little red X over here into a green check mark. And there we go, we get a little green check mark. And that means that with this theory, all three variations of this test pass. And that's just going to be a super quick video for us to look at BUnit and how we can interact with user interface elements. The big call out here, if you've watched the other videos that I've mentioned, and then you've come to watch this one, is that we're going from having to refactor some code out to make it more testable to skipping that all together because we're able to interact with the user interface without actually having to spin up a browser and have something essentially move a cursor to go click on things. In other user interface frameworks and other testing frameworks as well, you have this type of you know, replay or this interaction where a browser that's not headless necessarily will spin up, you'll see it on your screen. Um, these types of tests, in my opinion, they can serve a purpose, but it's my almost like last resort that I want to go to because of things like in this case, we have BUnit, and I've used other test methods where we're able to kind of get a lot of coverage without having to go as far as clicking through a user interface. But all of these are tools, right? There's no one right way to test. There's all these different options that you have to play with, and you can pick the best one or a combination of different options to give you the confidence that you need. If you wanna hear more thoughts from me on different testing approaches and how I think a lot of people that are talking about this on the internet are really making it one-sided, you can check this video out next. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.